Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Civil Line. Myself, Milan Patel, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today's topic is Building Planning. This is the second lecture of this topic. In previous lecture, lecture number one, we have discussed introduction to building planning, concept of plan of a simple residential building, and elementary principles of building planning like aspect, prospect, privacy, roominess, circulation, grouping, elegance, flexibility, sanitation, economy, and furniture requirements. Okay. In today's lecture, we will cover basic requirements for building planning and typical building layout. Okay. Let's start with basic requirements of the building. First requirement of for building planning is selection of site. Second is building bylaws. Third is orientation of the building. Fourth, requirements of a building. And fifth, functional requirement of a simple residential building. Okay. Let's start with selection of site. How site is selected for building planning? It should be on fairly level ground. It should be located in developed or fast developing locality. Topographic features of the area also play an important role while selecting the site for building. The site should have good land spec so as to promote healthy and peaceful living in the building. The site should be on an elevated land so as to have easy surface rendition. The site should be well connected by roads, bypass and service lines. It is most important that civic amenities like water connectivity, electric supply, drainage lines, etc. are available on the site. The site should have nearby facilities like school, health center, hospitals, post office, banks, etc. And the site should be away from number of industries, factories and noisy localities. Okay, so these are the points to be considered while selecting the site. Let's discuss second requirement for building planning which is building bylaws. So what is building bylaws? These are the number of rules to be applicable on buildings. Okay. There are the finest standards and specifications designed for construction of buildings in the area. Before starting the planning processes of a building, one must have the prior knowledge of building bylaws of that area. These bylaws are framed by the state government, municipal corporation, municipal committees, etc. like AMC, etc. Okay. Keeping in mind the recommendation of National Building Board IS 1256-1967 to guide the planners to design the proposed building in a systematic manner. So IS 1256-1967 which is the National Building Board is the reference for all building values in all cities in the in India. Okay. The plans of proposed buildings are to be prepared as per the building bylaws of that city which are checked and approved by local authority of the city. These bylaws differ from state to state or city to city. These bylaws are framed to avoid half as a development in the area and is used to provide health and comfort to the users. Okay. In building bylaws, one term which is built up area is there. So what is built up area? It is the area covered by building immediately above the plinth level is known as built up area. Or you can say built up area is the summation of carpet area plus the thickness of the wall. Okay. So carpet area is the usable area. If you add the thickness of the walls in the usable area, you can get built up area. Okay. It is the area covered by the building immediately above the plane level. It is called as build area. It is equal to the plot area minus area due to open spacing. That's all about building bylaws. Third is orientation of the buildings. The word orientation means to give proper direction to the building so that it gains the gift of natural resources such as rain, sun and air to great extent as and when required. Okay. The setting of plan of a building on its site with reference to the direction is known as orientation of the building. Okay. 
it plays a great role in increasing its utility from the viewpoint of climate consideration. Properly oriented building gets reasonable amount of air and light. India is a country where summer seasons has the longest span of about 8 months. As such, it is a hot country with great number of lights. So, the building exposed to sun get heated in day and remain hot for most of the night. Okay. If the place lies in hot zone, it is better to place shorter walls facing east and west direction. So, the walls of the building which are facing to east and west direction should be the short walls, not the long walls. Okay. In this case, less heat will be observed by the walls. If you are providing short walls in east and west direction, less heat will be observed by the walls. But walls will receive more heat if the longer walls are facing east and west direction. If the place is situated in cold zone, the house has to be oriented in such a way that it gets sun for maximum period of the day. Here in India, there are some places where there is a cold zone or you can say uh, number of snowfall is there like in Himalayan region okay you have to provide the longer walls in east and west direction okay to get the sun for maximum period of period the orientation of building should be such that it allows neither excessive nor deficient amount of air and light to enter in the building okay this is about the orientation of the building now let's Understand various suggestions for good orientation of the building. First suggestion, if the ground surrounding the building is provided with grass or tree or vegetation, it will considerably help in reducing the temperature inside the building. Okay, If you provide number of vegetation or number of trees around the building, the overall temperature in the building is decreased. Okay? The buildings usually south west which catch the breeze which flows in summer in that direction. Okay. Sufficient number of windows and ventilators a suitable level from the floor should be provided for sufficient light and movement of the air. If projections on east and west sides in the form of verandas, balconies, weather, stage are provided, the adjoining rooms remains comparatively cooler. Okay. You can clearly see in this figure also, the verandas are provided at the boundary of the building. Okay, which reduces the overall heat in the interior part of the building. Okay, or you can provide number of shades and or chaja to reduce the overall temperature in the building. Okay, it is desirable to provide damp roof pores at suitable level to keep away the walls from damp and moisture. RCG flat roofs should be provided with waterproofing treatment and slope. Two roofs should contain valley gutters during rainwater. Okay, these are the various suggestions for good orientation of the building. That's all about the orientation of the building. Now, let's understand the fourth requirement for building planning. Okay, number of requirements of a building. Building should be durable and stable to take the loads acting on it. It should be strong to withstand the impacts of atmosphere, environment, and earthquake. It should provide maximum living and working comforts. Building should be sufficiently ventilated and free from dampness. Grouping of rooms should be so planned as to ensure circulation and optimum utilization of spaces. Okay, so grouping should be such that circulation space and usable space should be there. Okay? Number of doors and windows should be sufficient and located in such a way that they should provide enough light and air. The circulation of the building as a whole should be planned in such a way so as to make the maximum use of natural gift of sunlight and air. While planning a building, people and the requirement should be given proper weightage. The building should safe against fire hazards. Okay? So, number of fire safety equipments should be there in the building. Over and above the building, should be safe against number of thefts and burglary. So you have to provide number of CCTV cameras for that. That's all about number of requirements of the building. Okay. Now let's understand number of functional requirements of the building. 
There is a difference between requirements, general requirements, and the functional requirement of the building. Let's understand functional requirement of the building. For understanding functional requirement of the building, we have to divide the building in three parts: living area, sleeping area, and service area. Living area is for general use. It includes drawing and living room. It should be planned near the entrance of the building so that number of guests should not enter in other parts of the building. Okay? Second is sleeping area. It provides bedrooms for sleeping and relaxing. So bedroom area is under the sleeping area. They may be or not may be with attached with bathroom or water closet. If it is possible, bathroom and water closet should be attached with the sleeping accommodation like bedrooms. They should be located so as to maintain privacy. So, sleeping area should be away from the living area for better privacy. Okay. Third is service area. This area includes kitchen, dining room, bathroom, water closets, etc. Okay. Other rooms such as office, puja room, study room are also included in service area. The service area should be at the center part of the building. Okay. It should be easily accessible from living area as well as from sleeping area. The purpose decides the size, location, and size of windows, furniture, etc. Okay. By providing service area at the central part of the building, we can minimize number of circulation in the building. Okay. That's all about the functional requirements of the building. That's all about the basic requirements for building. These are the five basic requirements of building plan. Now, let's move to the second topic of today's lecture, which is typical building layout. In typical building layout, we will understand first key plan, second site plan, and third layout plan, and understand the difference between key plan, site plan, and layout plan. Let's start with key plan. What is key plan? The purpose of key plan is to locate the site of construction in the region. This is the example of key plan. Okay? The person can use key plan to reach the site. The plan shows main roads and well-known buildings as landmark to reach the site. It should cover area of 2 km radius around the site. They are drawn to scale of 1 in 10,000. Okay? This is called as the key plan. The area covering the property is highlighted with etching line or some different color. Here in red color, the actual site is highlighted. Okay, this is called as key plan. Now let's understand this site plan. The purpose of site plan is to exactly locate the property with reference to existing properties in all four directions on very adjacent land. Okay, so in site plan only number of close properties around the site is located. Okay, whole area is not located. It is also so the land boundary, margins, construction area, streets, building on adjacent lands, service lines like water supply, telecommunication, etc. are shown in site plan. This is one type, uh, type of site plan. Here you can easily see number of roads around the site or number of build other buildings around the site. Okay. The boundary area of the ownership is highlighted by hatching lines. Here the white line is the boundary line. The scale may vary from 1 in 500 to 1 in 1000 depending upon the size of the land under ownership. So here scale is decreased because the area is less compared to the key plan. Now let's understand the layout plan. Where layout plan is useful? In case of very large area under development containing number of buildings, layout plan is prepared. This is the example of layout plan. For example, residential colony, college campus, industrial park, etc. requires layout plan because there are number of subplots. Or number of sub buildings are there. Okay. In layout plan, location of various buildings, roads, parks, landscaping, recreational areas are drawn in the plan. 
okay the scale may vary from 1 in 500 to 1 in 10000 depending on the size of the land covering by the site okay this is called as the layout plan so you can easily understand the difference between key plan site plan and layout plan key plan is for larger area showing number of adjacent properties of the area okay and it is used to reach the site site plan is shows the boundary of the area it also shows number of adjacent buildings around the site and layout plan is the plan of the whole site okay. that's all about the typical building layout i hope you all understand these two topics basic requirement for building planning in which we have understand five requirements like selection of site building bylaws orientation of the building basic requirements of a building and functional requirements of the building and in typical building, building layout we have covered key plan site plan and layout plan okay see you soon in the next lecture thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel civil line thank you